Okay. All righty, sir. So in three, two. Good afternoon. My name is Rod McMillian. I now call to order the January 17, 2023 meeting of the Audit Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee, at the discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison, may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's audit committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to con conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. As a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Jamison or Ms. Barr if you must leave the call by using the team chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Joes. Present. Mr. McMillian. Present. Ms. Lichter. I know she's here, but I can't hear her. Okay, thank you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you. A quorum being present. A quorum being present, where we begin. Ms. Jameson, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Barr. Present. Ms. Stevens. Present. Ms. Manna. Present. Mr. Fletcher. Present. Mr. Strait. Present. Ms. Sample. Here. Ms. Crew. Present. Mr. Edwards. Present. Ms. DiDonato. Present. Ms. Lear. Present. Ms. O'Connor. Present. Dr. Elmendorf. Present. Dr. McComas? Present. Ms. Schubert? Present. Mr. Hartlove? Present. Are there any other attendees present that I did not recognize? Uh, Mark Gingrich. Oh, thank you, Mark. Hearing no additional names, I turn the meeting back to you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you, Ms. Jamison. Would you, I saw Ms. Lichter give us a thumbs up. Will you see if her, if, if she can speak with us now? Yes, Ms. Lichter. I don't think so. Maybe she no. could just type present in the chat. Okay. Uh, Mr. Corns was reaching out to her. Good afternoon. If committee members have questions that are outside the scope of the reports presented this afternoon, please email Ms. Barr or me with your questions. We will follow up with appropriate individuals to get the answers to your questions. Item number three, approval of minutes. The live video footage of our last meeting represents the minutes of the meeting. The minutes stand approved as recorded. Item number four, reports. Ms. Jamison, please proceed with the FY23 homeschool audit report. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I am going to share my screen. Can you all see that? Okay, great. Uh, good afternoon, committee members and staff. Today, I am going to talk to you about the homeschool audit that we recently completed. The purpose of the audit was to determine if the review of homeschool portfolios was compliant with Comar regulations and to evaluate the controls over homeschool student data. First, let me give you some background. The Office of Homeschooling is part of the Office of Educational Opportunities within the Department of Academic Programs and Options. The Office of Homeschooling oversees about 2,000 homeschooled students within Baltimore County. BCPS hires contractual employees to perform portfolio reviews to ensure that Comar regulations are met and that regular instruction is provided. The parent or guardian must maintain a portfolio of materials, which demonstrates instruction and includes relevant materials. Portfolio reviews are required to be performed biannually. If a portfolio review identifies a deficient homeschool program, the family is notified and they are given 30 days to correct the issue. Next, some commendations that we identified in our audit. We found that training is provided to both new and returning portfolio reviewers to ensure accuracy and consistency among the reviews with all the families. 
we found that all sampled student portfolio reviews met the COMA requirements, and those were things like they were conducted twice a year, the instruction provided regular instruction in English, math, science, social studies, art, music, health, and PE, and that the parent maintained a portfolio to demonstrate this. We also found that any sampled deficient reviews that we looked at were properly remediated within the time frame given by Comar. Finally, there was one result that we identified related to homeschool student data. <clears throat> if it, it is not currently integrated into the BCPS student information system. At the time of the audit, the student data was located on an Excel spreadsheet and stored on OneDrive. The risk associated with this is that the data for potentially thousands of homeschool students could be lost. Although a workflow for the homeschool student data is on the roadmap for FY23, we uh, recommend that BCPS ensures that integration of this homeschool data occurs. And we understand that this was on the schedule before the ransomware attack, and it was delayed as a result. Overall, this audit had the highest rating of satisfactory, and we had outstanding cooperation from our colleagues in the Office of Homeschooling. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Division of Curriculum and Instruction staff to explain how they will implement their corrective action plan. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So good afternoon, Go everyone, and this is Dr. McComas, and I'm joined today by uh, our team, Dr. Elmendorf, Ms. Schubert, and Ms. O'Connell. Um, and thank you for um, helping us review everything and make sure that um, we are up to snuff. Uh, we also, I just want to say we appreciate the um, recommendation and encouragement to um, ex you know, move forward with ensuring that all of our homeschool student data is um, in focus. Uh, to that, we have invited some colleagues. So I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Elmendorf to talk about um, our work plan uh, in partnership with DOIT moving forward. Thank you, Dr. McComas. And yes, we're all here and um, we are uh, grateful to have our colleagues from DOIT actually on the call with us to answer any questions that are related to our corrective action, as you can see here in this document. Uh, we are on the roadmap for um, integration with SIS. And as you can see, meetings are planned to continue through fall of 2022 and winter of 2023 with an anticipated launch date of August 2023. Um, so at this point, you can see that we have a plan in place to um, address the recommendation. And I would invite at this time anybody from DOIT who might want to elaborate on what that process might look like between now and August of 2023. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jocelyn Lear, um, Director uh, in DOIT. Uh, currently, we are gathering our requirements, um, which are just the needs of the system to support this process. And we are also working um, with our colleagues in several other districts to um, garner some understanding as to how they also implement the system. So that is currently the work that we're doing. Uh, still, again, anticipated on track uh, for the start of the 23-24 school year. OK, you, committee Lear. members, excuse me, go ahead. I just want to thank uh, Ms. Lear for presenting. Any questions anyone might have? Committee members, any questions on this topic? Hearing no questions, thank you very much for the presentation. We're going to move on to item number five, new business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Barr, please proceed with the FY23 mid-year work plan update. Good afternoon. I'm trying to share my uh, window. Can everybody see the work plan? Yes. yes, we can. OK, thank you. So this is our mid-year update for FY23. And just I, I just wanted to point out on the cover letter that we were having some technical difficulties with respect to posting our reports on the website, but that has since been corrected. And as I go through this report, I'm just going to focus on um, the highlights and the changes from our last quarterly report to the current status um, or the status as of 1231-22. So as I go through this, I will just be selecting particular items and I'll begin with item number two here related to the Office of Purchasing. And I just wanted to make a general overall statement that 
cooperation has been um, overall excellent with respect to all the folks that we have been working with in trying to get gather our information related to these audit projects. Um, with respect to this item number two, Office of Purchasing, related to a review of contracts, agreement, and leases, we are in the um, field work stage, um, but our testing is 100% complete. It is now in the review stage, and we have an audit report that is currently being drafted. We do anticipate a February completion date of this particular project. With respect to item number three, Office of ESOL World Languages, and we're looking into the new immigrant registration and enrollment process. Um, we are still waiting on some information to finalize the audit. It is approximately 85% complete, and we anticipate that we'll get this project done hopefully by the end of this month or early February. Item number five, related to the homeschool program. You just heard the report related to that. They only had the one finding and they're on track to get that corrected and um, implemented no later than August of 2023. With respect to item number eight, we're looking into student enrollment and registration processes and related professional development. Um, we have field Field work is still in progress and our um, testing is underway. It's only about 30% complete. And as we have worked on this project and also I believe the ESOL project, we've identified additional areas that we need to test with respect to accuracy of enrollment codes. So because we have added that extra test work into this particular project, we're anticipating um, a a late February completion date, perhaps an early March completion date. And the other thing is item number 10, which is related to the Office of Pupil Personnel Services, but also um, touches on the enrollment piece with respect to student residency and shared domicile. We're going to um, report on that item with item number eight as well. And um, with respect to this item number 10, it is still in the field work stages. Our testing is still underway and we have about 70% of, of that complete. So again, because of the additional testing in item number eight, we're looking at a, a late February, perhaps early March completion date. Um, the next item is item number 11 related to the Office of Staffing and um, we are working with uh, Mr. Homer McCall. He has recently provided us some information to proceed with the, um, the hiring process part of the newly hired certificated employees. So we, we selected our sample and they provided us a lot of information and documentation to review. Um, however, we had to um, kind of pause a little bit with respect to the recruitment and retention portions of the audit and we anticipate being able to um, start looking at those areas again sometime in February. So as a result of that, we're unable at this time to estimate a project completion date until we get that information and documentation. So hopefully by our next audit committee meeting, we'll be able to provide you an estimated completion date. Um, with respect to item number 13, the Office of Certification and the MSDE certification process, we are um, working again with folks in the Department of Human Resources, and we have received um, certain documentations, for example, certain documentation, for example, um, the written direction and instructions for the MSDE teach system. We received 100% of those requested documents, and that testing is 100% complete. We've also received 100% of the requested documents related to SOPs and procedures, and we've reviewed all of that. What is outstanding is that we um, we have sent a sample for um, for those um, existing renewals and 40 new hires, but we have not received the information related to that. So we, but once we get that, we plan to test um, how the Office of Certification tracks their employees certificated status and um, and plan to test that through the Advantage HR information system. So we're working with Mr. McCall and Ms. Duckworth on that 
And because we don't have the information that we need yet, again, we are unable to project a completion date um, with respect to this project. But again, hopefully by our next meeting, we'll have some updated information related to that. With respect to item number 16, Department of Network Support Services and IT Security, um, we have received improved and excellent um, cooperation there, and we have preliminary findings drafted and started a draft report, and it's approximately 85% um, complete. And however, because of the nature of the audit and and perhaps the nature of some of the findings, we might have to talk about how to discuss the report distribution um, just because of the sensitivity and the nature of some of the findings um, that we may have. So we'll talk about that maybe at our, at our next meeting with respect to how to communicate that to the audit committee and to the board. The next item um, is item number 17 with respect to the maintenance of student student data in the Department of Instruction Technology. And we're still very early on in the field work stage because of our concentration on the other projects that um, you know we have open, but we have requested information and it has been received and we anticipate resuming work on this project sometime in, in mid-February. And uh, with respect to item number 18, with regard to the cloud environment and the SAS application, we just did receive some information today um, related to that project. And so it's really at the um, very infancy stages. You can see at the end of December, we had not started that yet, but we have gotten um, the contact information that we need to start in perhaps this third quarter. And then the last project that we have um, worked on in, in the second quarter is the um, Office of School Safety with respect to our SRO program. We're still in the process of communicating with a variety of individuals, internal and external, um, to the organization to finalize the audit. We've had to work with the Baltimore County Police Department and MSDE. So we have um, approximately 80% of the field work is complete and we do anticipate a February completion date for um, this audit as well. So it's it seems like a, a lot of these projects are gonna wrap up in February or early March um, with respect to those that were open in the second quarter. And I did have the opportunity to meet with the superintendent's cabinet um, this morning to, to review our work plan status and stress with them again um, how important the level of cooperation is for each project and how critical it is to get these audits done. And everybody has really been, um, again, very helpful in getting us the information that we need. Um, I also call to your attention that there may be, for the first time, some unsatisfactory audit ratings, perhaps, with respect to some of these that we have just reviewed, but we're gonna work with um, everybody to make sure that we're getting all the information that they have that's available to potentially minimize these types of audit results. And just as a reminder to the committee, um, all the chiefs are invited to attend the entrance and exit conferences, as well as these audit committee meetings when we present our report reports to you. And all of these reports that I discussed with perhaps of uh, the exception of the IT security report will be posted to our website after the law office reviews them to determine if anything needs to be redacted. So that concludes my update with respect to where we are with the work plan status at, at mid-year 1231. Um, Ms. Bar Ms. Barr, thank you very much. Yes. Committee members, any discussion on this topic? Seeing and hearing no discussion, we're going to move on to the next. Mr. Fletcher, please proceed with the FY23 mid-year investigations update. Thank you, Mr. McMillian, and I'm going to share my screen now as well. And hopefully everyone can see <clears throat> uh, this memo. So this is the mid-year report for the investigative uh, unit the investigations conducted within the Office of Internal Audit. 
And as we roll through it again, this mess or this information is uh, already on board docs as well. Um, but just to give a, a brief recap of the investigative side uh, of our office. Um, keep in mind as allegations come into our office, whether they come in through our hotline or their phone in or we receive something through the mail. Uh, what we do is we we triage, triage that initial information to determine uh, what the best course of action is going to be. And sometimes that will involve either a our office keeping and investigating um, that allegation, which is typical when it's a fraud, waste or abuse allegation. One of the other alternatives would be if we give it to BCPS management and then request some type of response back from them. Uh, typically, that response would would be something uh, to the effect of we are aware that this is an issue. However, it's more appropriate for your office or your area to investigate this. Please take a look into it and then provide us back with your response. And then the third type um, of, of approach that we would take would be when it's not necessarily an allegation of fraud, waste or abuse. Uh, what we will do with that is typically we'll provide those types of, of cases or case details to the appropriate level of management just to let them know this information has come in through our hotline. However, it's not considered fraud, waste or abuse. It's not something that we necessarily need to receive a response back from, but we want to let you know that this came in through the hotline and we want to provide it to you for your, your uh, review and disposition. And so as I talk about the different cases uh, in this mid-year report, we're, we're really focusing on those three types of um, of disposition. So whether it's kept and investigated by internal audit, whether it's sent to management for their review uh, and for them to provide a response back, or whether it's just something that we're going to memo to file where we provide the case details to management and allow them to handle it uh, on their own accord. And so as this information, as we take a look here at table one, um, and you can see some of the details, we received, and, and as Ms. Barr said, this particular report has information from quarter one and then also provides information from quarter two and it allows us to show where we are after the first two or i'm sorry after the first two quarters of the year so in quarter two you'll see we actually received 25 cases uh in through our hotline and of those 25 cases nine were considered to be internal audit investigations and you can see the breakdown uh, of what those types of, of allegations were uh, between conflict of interest, payroll, fraud, overtime, abuse, management issue, misuse of resources, and then procurement purchasing practices. So that was nine of the allegations. One was actually a BCPS uh, management investigation. So we did provide that to management and request a response back um, once they conducted their investigation. And then 15 of the cases received were actually we memo to file that information. Uh, and so that was the quarter. And so for the entire year, first two months of FY23, we have received 51 cases total. 15 have been kept by the Office of Internal Audit for investigation. Two have been provided to BCPS management for their review uh, and, and to provide a response back to us. And actually 34 uh, have been closed via M a memo to file um, because they were either not an allegation of fraud, waste, or abuse, or it was just a management issue for them to address. So that's table one. Table two actually takes us into a further breakdown um, of those cases. And so what this shows us is that in addition to the 51 cases that have been received thus far in FY23, we also had 13 uh, that were still open at the end of the previous fiscal year. And so what that tells us is that we had 64 cases that either were already open or have been open during this during this period. And as of the end of the second quarter, as of December 31st, 53 of those 64 cases were have been closed. And so as of 1231, we only have 11 cases open uh, or in process at that time. And this is just a breakdown. Uh, you can see the second half of this table here. This is a breakdown of, of the um, investigations that were closed and their substantiation levels. And so here you see our internal audit investigations. Here's our management investigations, and then here's our, our memo to file. Uh, again, so at this point in, in FY23, um, we've closed 53 cases and have 11 open. 
That takes us into tables three, four, and five. And what those tables are, are actually a breakdown of the internal audit investigations, the management investigations, and then the memo to files. So if we take a look at table three, these are the open investigations for, in, I'm sorry, these are the status of all of the uh, internal audit investigations that have been open throughout the entire fiscal year. And so you'll see everything here. Uh, this this is in a case that has been closed, provides a substantiation level. And then at the back end of that table shows us everything that's open as of 1231. And so Typically, what we'll do as we go through and present this to you, th this will look similar each month. Um, but we, what we don't do is we won't go through each individual line item. But if you have any questions or see anything as you're reading through the report, certainly welcome you to ask any questions or, or uh, if you want to email them to either to myself or Ms. Barr, we can get those addressed for you as, as uh, quick as possible. So on pages four and five, that's table three. That's everything for our internal audit investigations. Table four, that's on page six. That's our two management investigations. So we provided this information to management. They provided us with a response back uh, and we were able to close these cases out. And then page seven and eight has table five. This is all the information that came in via uh, the hotline that we ultimately closed with memo to file. Uh, and as you look at some of the, um, the column that says alleged details, uh, you can see some of the information of of what it is and, and why we don't necessarily investigate it within our office. Uh, you see a lot of no allegations made, um, concerns with employee behavior. Those are our management issues, so we provide that type of information to management for them to address. And Mr. McMillian, at that point, at this point, that is the uh, end of our mid-year report for the investigations. Mr. Fletcher, thank you very much. Committee members, any questions? Hearing no questions or seeing no questions. Wait, Ms. Lichter? No, I was, I was just saying no, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't see anything in the chat either. So that concludes this report. Uh, item six, announcements. The next meeting of the Audit Committee will be on Tuesday, February 21st, 2023 at 4.30 p.m. Thank. I want to thank everybody that, that was involved in this this meeting and these presentations and especially Mr. Corns for being our backup IT guy in the background helping us out. So thank you very much and see you later. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. you all very much. Have a good evening. Take care. Take care.